So, haven't used this channel for a while, have I? Oops. Sorry. Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about Tux. The year is now 2024 and Tux is finally coming to DVD. Many years after the campaign first started and many, many years since its last official home media release. No, we don't count Softy's Lighthouse. And in order to celebrate the 35th anniversary and in order to celebrate this magnum opus of achievement, I thought I'd have a look at this DVD and give my own thoughts on the matter. I would say I'd give my own 10 cents on the matter, but that joke's already been made a thousand times and I'm not going to plagiarise anybody. Now before we start, I just want to make it crystal clear, the opinions you hear in this video are solely those of my own opinions. They do not reflect anyone else's opinions and you are well within your rights to disagree or agree. Everyone's allowed to have their own opinions. But please, if you don't agree with me, please be respectful of my thoughts and my opinions, just as I will with yours. So let's start with the artwork. Now, when I say this artwork is simplistic, yes, very much so. But does it still look really nice? I'd say so too, yes. The, t the various tug symbols like the whistle, the flags, the anchors that are incorporated into the background look really nice. The logo looks really nice and really crisp, and the text is all really nicely uniformed and very easy to read. There are a couple of points that I'm not too sure on, though. The first one for me is the fact that it feels rather safe in this regard. It feels very similar to the original VHS covers. I can understand that it's very nostalgic seeing that cover, and it's very symmetrical with what we're used to. But, again, it feels rather safe and kind of lacklustre, if you ask me. Like, this is Tux's 35th anniversary. Like, could we not have had something uniquely special that sort of was screaming a celebration for Tux and also gave Tux its own identity? More on that in a second. One of my favourite bits of artwork relating to Tux is the artwork seen on the original publicity pack, which I frankly am a lucky owner of. Thank you, Chris Tulloch. <laughs> But, I would have much preferred to see artwork like that featured on this cover in some regard, rather than it's being the same old, same old. The other point, and this is the bigger thing that bugs me, it feels too similar to Thomas in some regard. Now, this is kind of a blessing in some regards, because a lot of people who have owned this DVD also own Thomas DVDs. So, you can put this alongside it, and it would fit in. However... Does Tux really need to be constantly connected to Thomas? One of the things that bugs me the most about the original covers is the fact it says from the producers of Thomas the Tank Engine at the top. And again, it says so here. Now, I can understand that to, a, to an extent because it's a selling point. It's a way of saying, oh, that was from the same people who did the early Thomas stuff. Maybe let's check this out sort of thing. It's a way of drawing people in. But, and more on this in a minute, do you need to constantly connect Tugs to Thomas? Tugs has its own identity, and you don't need to constantly rely on a certain blue engine. Some people have also raised concern about the use of the screenshots from the pneumatic on the cover. Now, I will defend the fact that the ones on the spine and the back cover look really nice, simply because they're small. They're not being stretched out across the cover, and they do look really nice. Additionally, it sells you on what you're going to get. It doesn't give you high quality scans from 35mm prints that you'd have seen on Salty's Lighthouse. Now, you see exactly what you're going to get. Now, I will admit the one on the front, it does look very soft and it is not the most appealing image. I would have maybe used a promotional image on the front, which would have looked more eye-catching and interesting, but the ones on the back and the spine look absolutely fine in my opinion. Something that has also been brought up in regards to the cover is the 35th anniversary logo. Now, I will stand by the fact that against certain colours, backgrounds, this logo is really well designed and looks really nice. One example was the 35th anniversary pin badges that were for sale at the recent event in April. Unfortunately, I didn't get my hands on one, but thanks to a friend of mine, I can actually show you what it looks like. Gold against black always looks really nice, regardless of what the context of why it's there. But gold against yellow... It just doesn't look nice. It sort of blends in and you can't tell when the logo ends and the backdrop starts. Possibly a drop shadow could have helped to make that look a little bit more easily discernible. But even then, gold and yellow just do not look good together. And I'm going to say it again, this is far, far too similar to recent anniversary logos for Thomas. Look at these, 75th, 
the 70th anniversary, they are all very much the same, like gold emblems with the number on it. And again, it feels lazy and quite safe in that regard. I'd much prefer something that was actually tug centric and not following a trend. I think something that would have been really interesting would have been to have two smokestacks to make up the logo. One of them being OJ's number three and Zip's number five. Put them together, that would have looked really good. Possibly even a life ring around it. It would have felt very nautical. It would have felt very tux. And I'll say this again, and I've said this many, many times. Yes, there is always going to be the connection to Thomas with tux. You can't escape it. It looks very Thomasy, and it has the, from the producers of Thomas plastered across most of the original merchandise, like the tapes and now this DVD. But ultimately, tux has its own identity. Tux is its own thing. You can't constantly rely on something being connected to something else in order to sell it. It's helpful to have it like that, but that's not always going to keep people interested. So I would have much preferred something that is very Tugs itself rather than sort of falling into the safe category of Thomas. That's not to say that these are poorly designed. They are very well designed, but they are very safe. So inside the box, so inside the case, we have a little pamphlet with behind the scenes photos on it. Seven in total to be exact. And I would say these images are really nice to see. I can understand in regards to the top hat one on the back. It's technically not from the episode, but it does represent something you see in the episode. Even if it's literally just one shot at the beginning, it's something. And let's face it, it's a nice image. Any nice behind the scenes images are a win in my eyes. I really like the set, the set photos. Again, very non-specific, but I'd rather have something a nice looking non-specific image than something that's completely irrelevant altogether. The images of sunshine in the workshop being worked on looks really nice, especially the different pupils in his eyes. And there's a nice behind the photo of that long take that you see in the scissor rail, which I'm sure most people assume was originally for the original 30 minute cut of sunshine before everything started getting cut down. Overall, I think these are really nice. Would I like to see more from this? Yes, I think there could have been more images in this, depending on what was available at the time and depending on what was approved. Because at the end of the day, we don't know what was allowed to go in into this pamphlet. We don't know whether the small piece of paper we got was all that was approved, or could there be more? If there's the possibility to have more, I would push for more to go in to give more variety and more opportunities to see images. You also get a copy of the 15 minute script. Now, people will obviously question why would I want to copy the script when I'm literally watching the exact same version on TV. But for me, this is a collectible that I really enjoy collecting. I already own two books in my collection, which are books published by the BBC and they contain the scripts for the first two seasons of the 90s sitcom Bottom starring Rick Mel and Aid Edmondson. And even though I watch these episodes profusely on TV, I will more than happily sit down with one of the books and just read through the scripts and I'll be laughing along. Something else I've also done with these two scripts in particular and the Sunshine one is I've had the episode on and read along with it. And that's often very amusing uh, to do. Now, I will say, would it have been nice to have seen something like an early draft of the script or maybe the 20 minute in comparison to the 15? More on that in a bit. But end of the day, again, we don't know what was getting cleared. It could have been that, that the exhibition had been told, you can do this, 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 this is all you're allowed to do. And then they got to work with what they, they are allowed to do. We don't know that for sure, but we sort of had to assume that maybe that's where the, the butt stops. Maybe they have some rules in place. That means they have to follow certain rules. We don't know. Additionally, it's nothing huge, but there are the odd stage directions in the script that indicates that maybe they were thinking differently about how the shots would come together. For example, in scene two, during the star dot briefing, when Top Hat says, Sunshine! Only good for day workers here. The actual stage direction indicates that the shots are meant to cut at different points. Again, it's nothing major, but it's nice to see small things like that. And you do see that when the scripts have been on display at events. The scripts are not beat for beat as they were on screen, even the 15 minute ones. So, yes, it's very similar, but you do get the odd little moment and you think, 
oh, that's interesting they were thinking of doing it this way. And it may even give people the opportunity to be more creative and expand on how they interpret things coming together. Now let's get to the big point of discussion in this review, the DVD itself. Now, a lot of people have developed their opinions based on a DVD rip that has been circulating the internet. I don't like to rely on DVD rips as a source of reference for picture quality because from my own personal experience, DVD rips can look pretty naff if not done properly. So what I've done is I found a spare DVD player from an old bedroom and wired it up to my MacBook and the video capture software I have attached to it. I'm going to pop the DVD in and we're going to see exactly what the DVD is reading. The tugboat, for its size, is the most powerful craft afloat. And the star tugs are the power behind the docks and waterways that make up the big city port. Now, it's safe to say, in my personal opinion, the picture quality and the colours look really, really nice here. They may not be as sharp as other sources. I'm sure people who do VHS upscaling could probably provide better results but ultimately it's still clear and good picture quality. It, I feel it matches up very well with some of the early DVD releases of Thomas. Thomas didn't look pristine restored straight away. It's based on what is available at the time and what people can afford to do. Now, obviously trying to compare the works of VCI releasing Thomas to the exhibition releasing Tugs, it's like comparing chalk and cheese. VCI is a multi-million pound company who has the facilities to get the best out of footage. Whereas the exhibition may not have that money, or the resources, or the time. We don't know uh, what they have at their disposal, but ultimately I'm sure we can agree that trying to upscale pneumatic submasters will take a lot of time, expertise, and money. End of the day, I'd rather they did what they did here, which was do a direct transfer of the footage and get the best they can out of it, rather than then trying to upscale it themselves and going too far with it and making the footage look worse. And ultimately, there have been claims out there that the footage is compressed. Now, I can't see any reason why this DVD would have to be compressed. It's 15 minutes, there is no need for it to be compressed, and it doesn't look compressed, in my opinion, when you play it on a DVD player. And even when I put it on my big screen TV in my room, the only issue I have with it on there is something to do with the actual television settings itself. The whites are very blown out, and the blacks are very crushed blacks, like it looks it doesn't look as nice on that TV compared to a natural transfer from the DVD player. Ultimately, I can see that this is a really good starting point and I can see the possibility of things improving over time. As time goes by and the ability to upscale this material becomes easier and more accessible, there's the possibility that we can pull more out of these submasters or possibly, while well, unlikely, we might find better versions to create a more consistent look across the whole series. I know there is the broadcast master tape for Sunshine out there, which was owned by the BFI and certain individuals in the fandom have digital copies, but I'd rather have it all be from the same source rather than one episode from this source and the rest of them from another. Think about it this way, if the master broadcast tape had been used for this Sunshine DVD and then pneumatic submasters had been used for the rest of the series, the rest of the series would look like rubbish compared to the broadcast master tape because it's a master. Submasters are not going to be the greatest source of picture, but if this is what the rights holders have at their disposal, then I'd much prefer we stuck to the same source and keep it consistent looking overall, rather than having the picture be inconsistent, if you know what I mean. That's why I'm not too keen on the idea of using VHS upscales as a source for doing this sort of thing, because yes, you can make VHSs look amazing. I've certainly tried my hand at it myself, but VHSs are not consistent across the board. Like one tape could look amazing, another could look like rubbish. Even multiple copies of the same tape can look like that. Compare my UK Sunshine tape to my Australian. It's like chalk and cheese looking at the same image. And that's with the same settings. So end of the day, it's better to keep the image looking consistent and nice rather than trying to get the best out of it and ultimately having it be either inconsistent or gone too far and made the image look worse. 
The Duchess threw a big party, celebrating her arrival in port, everybody enjoying themselves. But all Sunshine wanted to do was to get away from Big City, back to his simple life upriver. We're lucky in the fact that because of the master broadcast tape and various recordings of the broadcasts, the broadcast version of Sunshine has had very good sound quality overall, and this is another fine example of the sound. Without Big Mac, the stars were straining to dock the Duchess. Zoran watched closely. It'll be interesting to see, if we get round to it, what regatta and munitions will sound like, simply because the versions that have been found from broadcast recordings do not sound very good. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out like. Now, there's also the point about the single episode format for these releases, but this is nothing new. Japan started that trend many, many moons ago. The public releases were single episodes, and the multiple episode versions of the tapes were rental copies. And also, we had to remember, this is a big test. Like, the rights holders don't know how well these DVDs are going to sell, and ultimately, it's much better to test with one episode and make sure it's going to sell, rather than throwing all 13 out at once and then possibly not selling the whole lot. Another way of looking at it is this way. You don't jump in the deep end of the swimming pool before you learn how to swim. A good friend of mine reminded me that recently, and it's right. Like, why would you throw yourself in at the deep end if you don't know what the results are going to be like? At least now this DVD has sold out and the next two are selling well. It's showing that the prospects of Tugs becoming a regular release on DVD in the future is possible and we know it will sell. In fact, there have been people who have wanted copies of the Sunshine DVD, found out too late, and it sold out before they could get one. But that now means if the prospects come along for more releases in the future, people will be still clamouring for it. This also alludes to the point that it is literally one 15-minute episode on this disc. Now, is that enough to justify the asking price and also to celebrate the 35th anniversary? No, but again, this is a test. We can't assume that everyone's going to throw everything into one basket straight away. I know it would have been great to see stuff like the sizzle reel or the US dub, but again, it's likely the rights holders have said, okay, put this one episode out on the disc, see how well it sells, and then we'll go from there sort of thing. There's no guarantee that this was going to sell very well until it went out on sale. It could have possibly been that only 10 people bought it, and then there was going to be like 140 copies lying around gathering dust. At which point, there'd be no point in putting that out there. Ultimately, I do think some of the unreleased material would be beneficial for future releases. For example, one thing I think would be very interesting is if we get to the point where Warrior comes out on DVD, have the work print as a bonus feature. So, not only so people can see the whole work print, but also you could compare it directly to the finished episode on the same disc. Alternatively, something that will be even better in my eyes and be very much worth the money, is to do a DVD release of all unreleased material on one disc. So you essentially have everything that is unreleased, like the sizzle reel, the work prints, the US dub, put all that together. I personally think that would be a really big way to celebrate Tugs' 35th anniversary, to get all that together on one disc. But ultimately, that's down to what the rights holders are willing to do. Right now, I'm just really chuffed to see Tugs coming out on DVD. It's been a long time coming, and I'm just filled with endless joy looking at this thing. Now, the big question that I'm sure some people will also be asking is, is this DVD worth the value of money? Now, for what you get, this DVD is quite simplistic and minimalistic. More could have been done to celebrate Tugs' 35th anniversary. There could be more photos in the booklet. The cover could have been much more of a grand celebration of the series rather than sticking with what we already know. And I'm sure people, will, some people will say that this is not worth the money. I mean, for a 15-minute episode on one disc, a couple of pictures and a script, I can see what people mean. I'm sure it would have been nice to have more in there. Something that would have been interesting, had the possibility of being available, would have been to put the 15 and the 20 together, like I just mentioned with Warrior. It'd be good, where possible, to put the two versions side by side on a disc so people can compare, and you have the choice then to which one you watch. The biggest problem being that, apart from Warrior, where a work print is known to exist, as far as we know, there is no production copies of the 20-minute cuts. 
So the only source we know we have are VHS tapes. And as I mentioned, they can be the most inconsistent and unreliable source of visual media out there. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> and also, it's not just down to getting the DVDs made that makes these things expensive. Like, yes, a limited edition run will cost more than like a general release. But it's not just that that makes these DVDs expensive. A lot of people are also owe royalties. Depending on what was in people's contracts back in 1988-89, people will be owed royalties for these episodes coming out on DVD. And that's got to be taken into account too, because if you make the DVDs cheap, but then most of that money goes towards the royalties, like the rights holders might say, what's the point of making these DVDs at such a low price if all the money's going to go to the, to the royalties and there's going to be nothing left for the rights holders? That's why I think the price is so high. Would I like it to be cheaper? Yes. But... End of the day, while simplistic and lacking in some regards, this DVD still makes the Tugs fan in me very happy. It's been over 20 years of campaigning and establishing professional connections to get to the point where this was possible and was able to happen. I would highly encourage fans who are unsure about this DVD to purchase a copy of any of the future releases where you can. Because regardless of whatever it may be, just give this DVD a chance for yourself. I wouldn't rely on scans of the cover or rips of the DVD. Just buy a copy and see for yourself what the quality is like. And if you like one, then you can always look to collect more. If you don't like the one, at least you've tried. You've given it a chance. There's also the point that we should never bite the hand that feeds us. End of the day, the rights holders to Tugs didn't have to let this happen. And they could easily take this all away from us too. Yes, you can watch the episodes on YouTube for free, but that's not going to support the brand. I'm buying these DVDs to support Tugs as a brand. Because at the end of the day, Tugs relies on fans like us to keep it alive. It still needs a lot of time and a lot of hard work to get to the point where Tugs has a concrete future. So let's not argue about this. Let's support the brand and make sure it stays alive. Do you agree with the points I've said? Do you have your own opinions? Let me know. Honestly, I'm interested to hear what you have to say, but please be respectful. If you don't agree with what I've said, whether it's a part of what I've said or anything I've said, please be respectful, as I will be for you. If you have any more ideas for Tug's topics I could discuss in the video, let me know. I might do more. Who knows? Other than that, have an amazing day, everyone, and a happy 35th anniversary to Tug's.